Before we start the video, a large thank you to Roth Future, Ryan, Carter, Zephyr, and Blue Haven for their support on Patreon. I hope you guys enjoy the video. And an immense thank you to Halo Burner and Sora Stratos for their continued support to the channel. You guys are absolute legends, and I hope you enjoy the video. Hello guys, and today we're going to learn how to save more than just basic variables. And in this video, we're going to use dictionaries to save our boss's state. Uh, to determine whether they've been defeated or not, which we're then going to use to see if we actually allow them to spawn in the world. So let's start by giving this boss unique ID, and I'm on the AI boss character manager script. I'm going to make a public int, I'm going to call it boss ID. I'm going to initialize it at zero or one or whatever you want, really, and you can use a string here instead. I'm going to use an int uh, just because it's pretty simple and straightforward, and I'm probably not going to have a whole lot of bosses. So I'm then going to go to my game saving folder and scripts. I'm going to make a new script. I'm going to call this serializable dictionary. And now what I'm about to do can work for a lot of different data types. Like if you wanted to save custom data, this is how you would do it. Uh, you'd make a serializable script for it and then write the logic. So we're going to make it so we can serialize a dictionary. Uh, just basically that means just save it. And we can just use this then to basically just uh, add different serializable dictionaries to our character save data. So let's start by saying system.serializable here up top. And this is not going to be a mono behavior. Uh, we're going to start by saying uh, t key and t value here uh, after serializable dictionary. We're going to erase the mono behavior and replace that with dictionary. We're going to then say t key and t value. And then we're going to need to call a few things here. The first one, the i serialization callback receiver. And you're going to see that's going to give us an error. If we hover over it, that's actually because it wants us now to auto fill in these two things here. So let's just add these two functions, and this is uh, on public void on before serialization. And this is called before serialization, on before serialize, sorry. And then public void on after deserialize. And it's still giving me an error. Let me just hover over here and see what's going on. Oh, I see, I misspelled this. I meant to say deserialize here, not serialize. All right, there we go. So you can see the error goes away. Now, what do we do here? Well, and this might be a little bit weird for some of you who haven't worked with serialization a lot before, uh, typically in terms of saving. Don't worry. Um, even I forget how to do this until I look back at my notes half of the time because uh, I only ever really do this kind of thing when I'm saving data. So serialized field, private list, T key, call this keys equals new list of type keys. We do the same thing for the values because remember a dictionary is just a key. So that will be the ID, the boss, and the value is the bool if they're defeated or not. Um, this is just one example. Obviously, you can use this uh, in many different ways, but that is the setup of a dictionary. So on before serialize, we want to clear our keys and our values. So we're not having them linger from the last time we've used serialization. And then we're going to go use a for each loop here. We're going to say for each key value pair. And then we're going to inside that say T key and T value. Whoops, there we go. So T key and then T value. And we're going to call that pair. And we can just use in this. Then inside that for each loop, all we're going to do is say keys dot add pair dot key. And then values dot add pair dot value. And then on after deserialize, we're going to clear this list here that we have, or this uh, the serialized dictionary. You say clear, you don't need to say this dot clear. Then we're gonna say, we're gonna do a check here if our keys dot count don't match our values dot count. Then we know we have a problem, so throw yourself a debug uh, error message and just say, hey, you should check this out because this is not supposed to be this way. And this is just a fail safe in case something's going wrong. Um, if you set this up correctly, you won't have this problem, but I'm just gonna put it here just in case because if this does happen, then you should come back and investigate because something is horribly wrong. It's always nice to have those checks just in case. And then right below that, all we're going to do is use a for loop now. And we're going to iterate through our keys.count. And we're going to add keys i and values i. And that's it. Now we can actually call this right here as a variable in our character save data, and we can save dictionaries, and I'll show you. So if we go over here now to our character save data, we can use this just like any other variable we've had in the past here. So let's copy this serializable dictionary, 
And now we treat this like a dictionary and we, we need to require a, uh, a value and a key here. So I'm gonna make a header for bosses and actually I'm just gonna put this down here right below everything else. And I am going to make a public serializable dictionary. And for my key, I want an integer because that is what our boss's ID is. We use an int, if you're using a string, use a string here, that's fine too. And then for our value, we want a bool because we're going to use this one specifically for has this boss been awakened? And we'll make another one for has this boss been defeated? So let's just call this boss is awakened and we can copy and paste this again and say boss is defeated. So again, the int represents the boss ID, the bool is the status. Why do we want bosses awakened? Well, in some cases, um, well, in every case, actually, if you've already fought the boss but failed, you'll, a fog wall will be present the next time you come back. You have to walk through the fog wall to engage the boss again. So once the boss has been awakened, we want to activate that fog wall, basically. And the defeated status will determine if the boss is actually going to be allowed to be active in the world uh, when it attempts to spawn, because if you've already defeated it, then it's not going to load in the world anymore. So let's then make a public character save data down here. And let's just instantly when we're calling this uh, save data when we're creating it, let's just say bosses awakened is equal to a new serializable dictionary. Likewise, we can say bosses defeated is equal to a new serializable dictionary. Okay, so let's save that now and let's minimize this or rather go back to the, the boss manager for a second. And let's say using unity.netcode. And then right below all of our comments, let's make an override. For, oh, I can't do that yet. Make sure this derives from your AI character manager. Mine was still on mono behavior. Now let's override on network spawn. And let's do a couple of things here when we're actually spawning uh, this boss. So on network spawn, first thing we're gonna do is say if this is the server. So again, um, if you're the server, then obviously that means you're the host because in our setup, the host is also the server. So you could also just say if, if this is the host world in a comment if you want, but I'm gonna erase that because I don't need to, but if you want to be clear on that, you can put that above. So if this is the server, we're going to say that means this has to be the host, which means we're going to check our save file to determine if this boss can spawn because the host determines if the boss can spawn. Then we're going to say if world save game manager dot instance dot current character data dot bosses awake and contains this ID. So if it does have this ID, do something. If not, we do something else or sorry, if it does not have this ID. If it does not have this ID, we're instantly going to add it by saying world save game manager dot instance dot current character data dot bosses awaken dot add. And we add the boss ID and we make sure the is awaken is set to false because if it doesn't exist, we could have never awakened it. So if it's not already in the list, there's no way it's awakened. Likewise, there's no way it's defeated. So add awaken and defeated and set the value here to false. Make a comment here. If our save data does not contain information on this boss, we add it, and if it does not contain the information on this boss, that means we've never encountered it, so it is not awake and has not been defeated. Now, if it does already exist, then we're going to load the data from the already existing uh, data on our character save. So if we had a local variable here, which we will make momentarily for has been defeated, we could set that equal to the has been defeated status in our save data. So let's go ahead and do that just real quick. I'll make a private or you can make it serializable if you want to. Um, bool for has been defeated, just so we can see it in the inspector. And we won't do has do, uh, has been awakened yet because we're gonna handle that when we get to fog gates. But let's just do this for now. So has been defeated is equal to world save game manager dot instance dot current character data dot bosses defeated. We pass our boss ID, so that will get the status um, from the dictionary if we just use our boss ID here. And then if we have been defeated, now we're going to start by saying game object dot set active false, but we're going to make that um, a bit more intuitive in a moment. But just to show you this works, let's just start by doing that. We're going to save that. And I'll quickly set up an example here so you can see this working in real time. So let's make a header for test. And then we're going to delete this after, but we'll keep a lot of logic inside of it. So let's make a bool defeat boss debug is equal to false. I think you know what's going to happen here on update. We're going to check for this to be true, and then we're going to run some logic. So let's override our update method. And again, this is purely temporary. Um, if defeated boss debug, defeated boss debug is equal to false. And now the logic we're going to write here, we will keep. So what well, we want to test it first. So we're going to say has been defeated is equal to true. And then we can copy our, our searching here in our dictionary. We're going to mostly use the if and else statement here. Uh, we can delete the contents of it. So um, we're just going to set this to true for bosses that have been awakened and bosses have been defeated. Um, so 
if it doesn't contain it here, let's just paste this down here as well. So there we go. We want to first, if it does already contain it, we want to first remove the entry in the dictionary by just using our boss ID. And then after we've removed it, we re-enter it with the value is true. There we go. So again, remove it first and then add it in again as true when you're changing the value. And then lastly, we save the game by saying world save game manager instance that save game. So if we go to the game here now, I'm gonna have to do a couple things first and I'm going to just uh, set up a spawner here. It's kind of funny using this tiny spawner for uh, Dirk, but we're gonna do that. So create another spawner here and put Dirk in there and get Dirk out of the scene. Make sure he's spawning through our character spawner we created in the last episode. Uh, otherwise you'll have some issues. I'm gonna save my prefab here too, just to be safe. So I'm gonna save the game here now. And I'm also gonna add Dirk to our, my prefabs list. Uh, very important, otherwise you won't be able to spawn him. And also if you're having some problems here too, make sure you're filling in estates if you're testing with me, otherwise the game's gonna throw you a bunch of errors. So I'm just gonna put all these generic states in here. This is not permanent, we're gonna change this later. And rebake your nav mesh or else you will also get an error. I'm also gonna delete the regular spawns here so we can just focus on Dirk. I'm gonna turn Dirk away from me and save the scene. So if I go into the scene here now, you see there he is. And if I click defeat boss debug, you can see has been defeated is true. You can see that the game saves. Now, if I jump back into the game here again, a little back, he's no longer there. Cool, working as intended, right? Well, almost. You can see here, he is definitely not there and that works. But if I were to connect with a client right now, he would still be there. Uh, also, make sure you click this migrate to new list thing on your network manager. Otherwise, you might have an issue spawning network prefabs if you're updating to a new version of netcode like I have. So click that button. Now, if I come back in here and I'm on a client, you can see that, oh, Dirk's not there. But if I turn around, yes, he is. He's awkwardly back here at the, the zero position in the world. So this is because the connected client has no idea that Dirk has actually been despawned because it's not a network variable. So let's delete this test debug and let's actually um, make some logic here to do this properly. So we can keep everything in this update method, we can move it. So you can see here we have a process death event coroutine on the base class character manager. Let's override that, copy and paste the whole thing and put it on the boss character manager. Change virtual to override. And we can, again, keep everything here, but we're gonna add some functionality ourselves. And what we wanna do is make a save when we defeat the boss. So copy all that nice save logic we just made in this debug function and paste that inside our process death event. This obviously only happens for bosses, which is why we're putting it exclusively on the boss. You're not saving the state of any normal character when they're defeated, just the boss. So what you want to do too is make sure this is inside if is owner. You don't want to edit the save file if you're not the host of the world. So let's quickly position that inside if is owner. That way we're not editing the save file of our clients when they're not even on their own world. All right, so we can save that here now and delete the update function if you haven't already. Now let's go over again to the character network manager and let's make a bool, a network variable for is active. And again, guys, if you haven't clicked that migrate network objects list on your network manager, if you've updated netcode for game objects, please do that or you might not be able to spawn your uh, network prefabs anymore. I know I could not, so. Now let's call this variable is active and the default status is gonna be true most of the time, so we'll make it true um, and let's save that. So what we can do then is go down here to where we have our on is changed uh, functionalities and we can make one for on is active change, bool old status, bool and new status. And we're gonna simply reference the status that is by just coming in here and we'll make this a virtual void too because we're probably gonna want different logic here for the player uh, in the future, but we'll see. So we're gonna say game object dot set active is equal to is active dot value. And now we wanna trigger this, so how do we do that? Well, we could just do this on our AI character manager or our AI boss character manager. But honestly, let's just do this on the character manager for now because we're probably gonna want some form of this on everybody, including the player. So let's go to the character manager base class and let's go to our on network uh, spawn. And what we're gonna wanna do is simply say character network manager dot is active dot on value changed plus equals character network manager dot on is active changed. Now remember the key word here is on value changed. So if you join the game and it's already been disabled, 
but you join after it's changed, and again, set up your uh, your on network despawn too, then this isn't gonna trigger because the keyword again is on value changed. So to mitigate this, we're gonna make it so when the object is spawned, we can say character network manager dot on is active change false and then pass the status of is active dot value. Now you could do this only if you're a client and not the owner, because um, that would if you're the owner, it would imply that you're the host. But I'm just gonna do it generally here because again, uh, we need to make sure this is being called and it's syncing to the status when you've already joined because it's not changing if it's already changed before you've joined. So let's go to the AI character boss manager. And instead of saying game object dot stack of false, we're going to say character or AI character network manager to be precise. I think that's the one we're gonna use. Yes, here it is. Okay, cool. AI character network manager dot is active dot value is equal to false. And now that should do what we're looking for it to do. So let's save that. Jump back into the game here. You can see I've loaded my save and the is active bool is definitely false. I got my client here with me. If I drag the screen over, Dirk is nowhere to be seen. And what's cool is even though his object is disabled, check this out. If I tick is active, he pops back in. And also for the client, he pops back in. So you can actually still call functions on disabled game objects. It's just that update functions don't run. So that's a bit of useful information if you didn't know that. I'm sure a lot of you probably did. But there you go, guys. We have a way now to synchronize the boss's status in the world, and we have a way to save their status when we defeat them. So in the next video, we're going to basically make the awaken portion of the boss fight, and we're gonna set up some fog walls. So this is my homework for any of you who wanna go ahead and try this yourself, and I greatly encourage you to do this because it is the best way to learn. Use your knowledge now of taking these statuses on the boss and make it so that if the boss has already been awakened, then a fog wall or in some kind of a barrier will appear. Uh, just make it so that something pops up and blocks your entry until you interact with it. Um, and if you get something to appear in the world when the boss has already been awakened, great. So yeah, go ahead and try it. That is the best way to learn. Just dive in and try it. And if you break it, don't worry about it. I will give you the solution in the next video. And if you come to a conclusion on your own, that is awesome. All right, guys, thank you very much for being here with me. I hope you all have a lovely weekend, and I will see you next week. As always, a special thank you to my patrons. It is because of all of you lovely individuals. I get to keep doing this, and I love doing this.